Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone out there in YouTube land. Um, we are at the end of week 19, and this is day seven. Day seven is where I read the thought of the week that's in the text, just verbatim, not my words, but Kay's, Kay Arthur's, who uh, authored this. So I want to give all the credit to her. Thought for the week. Psalm 123 says that God is enthroned in the heavens. Through Isaiah the prophet, God declares, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me? And where is a place that I may rest? That's from Isaiah 66 verse 1. Throughout the Psalms, we've seen God as the creator of the heavens and the earth. So he transcends the physical heavens and earth we see. And his throne in the heavens must transcend this creation. That's why astronauts have not seen the throne of God when in space. We also know that Jesus, God's only begotten Son, God who became flesh and dwelt among us, ascended into heaven after 40 days of ministry on earth following his resurrection from the dead. Hebrews and 1 Peter teach us that Jesus sat down at the right hand of God. The right hand, which is dominant in most people, is the side of authority and power. The same hand both points a weapon and extends friendship and peace. The one who sits at the right hand is the chief deputy, next in line of authority. From this concept, we get our phrase, right-hand man, the most trusted, valuable, utilized assistant. Jesus, then, sitting at the right hand of God, is the Father's ultimate agent. What role does he have? Job said, even now, behold, my witness is in heaven, and my advocate is on high. John reinforces this. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. We need an advocate, someone who pleads our case to the Father, because we have an adversary, the devil, who prowls around like a roaring lion seeking to devour. He's called the accuser of the brethren in the book of Revelation. But our advocate is at the right hand, Satan will accuse us as guilty of sin and unworthy of mercy according to strict legal justice. But our advocate will stretch out his nail-pierced hands and show the Father that the penalty has already been paid. And the Father will look at the accused, you and me, and see that we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. He will tell Satan our sins are forgiven. We will live, not die. This great drama unfolds over all the centuries that Jesus sits at the right hand of God. Psalm 110 says that he sits there until his enemies are made a footstool for his feet. 1 Corinthians 15 declares that Jesus will reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last enemy to be abolished is death. In Revelation, we read about a great white throne judgment after Jesus' millennial reign, when death and Hades are thrown into the lake of fire, the second death. Then we have the description of the new heavens and new earth, in which there is no more death. Jesus is a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek, one without beginning or end, with no mother or father. For Jesus is God, not a created being. Psalm 110 can't be speaking of David because Jesus says it in it, David refers to the Christ as his Lord. This is good news. David hits the nail on the head here. No man can deliver us from the power of the enemy. Only the God-man, Jesus, can deliver us from him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. We read that in Hebrews 2, verse 14. God had to become flesh to do that, and God did it in the person of Jesus. As David prays in Psalm 108, O oh, give us help against the adversary, 
for deliverance by man is in vain. The Lord is our help. Following his victory over death, Jesus opened the way for us to enter the very throne room of God. In the temple, no one but the high priest could enter the Holy of Holies to stand before the Ark of the Covenant, on which was the mercy seat, where God himself met with man. But at Jesus' death, the veil was torn in two, opening the way. This great high priest, not descended from Aaron, but in the order of Melchizedek, now stands before God's throne, ministering continually. Now we can boldly approach the throne of grace. That's what Psalm 110 points to. Rejoice and praise the Lord. Give him thanks. Well, my dear friends, I'm so happy you've stayed with us to this point, the end of the week, week 19, and next day we start week 20. And the the title of week 20 is, This is the Lord's Doing. So be blessed and be a blessing. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.